How many of you have ever read a book and you got to the end and you go, really? <laughs> really? I just read that and that's the way that that ends? It's not right. It's not right. That's how I can imagine the early monks who read the Gospel of Mark. Because you've noticed, if you noticed, if you're following along as I was reading this morning, I left out part of the reading. I did that intentionally. Um, and actually, that verse, that last verse in your, the longer ending in your uh, bulletin there is not actually even the longer ending. There's a longer, longer ending to the Gospel of Mark. I think the Gospel of Mark goes through like verse 20, I think, 16, verse 9 through 20, I think. There's extra verses tacked on there. Most scholars, though, believe, and I being one of them, not that I'm a scholar, but believe that the Gospel of Mark ends where I ended it today. Then they left the tomb and said nothing to no one because they were terrified and afraid. What an ending to the story. Is this really how Mark ended the Gospel? The women left the tomb and said nothing to no one. It's a really bad ending to a really good story. If we think that it's the ending. Right? Is it really the ending? Did Mark really mess all of this up? I don't know. There's some interesting things to look at here, though. It talks about how the women walking, and they wondered how they're going to roll this big, massive stone away, right? And they get there, and they walk in, and the angel says, Don't be terrified. Would that help you at all? <laughs> really? I mean, three days ago, we just took the guy that we've been following for three years. We put him behind this rock. We rolled it into place. And now they've rolled it out of the way. And he's gone, number one. There's some, something that looks like an angel sitting here telling me not to be afraid. It just doesn't really work for me. I think I'd be terrified. I might actually run away, screaming, actually. But they stayed there and they listened. And the angel said to them, Go and tell the disciples and Peter. Peter, the one who screwed everything up three times, just denied Christ. Right? The man who went from being the leader of a ragged band to being one who doesn't have faith. Let's go tell the disciples and Peter. That's grace, if you can't recognize it. That's grace. Because he's still part of the group. And still called by name, actually. He's not just the disciple. He's named. So the women listen. And they're terrified. And they run away. See, the thing that we have to understand is who was the Gospel of Mark written for? Who? Was it written for us who are already believers and don't have to be convinced that Christ came out of the tomb? Because we know the promises that He made and we know that He's going to hold true to them. Because He told us that after He died on the cross, that three days later He was going to rise again from the dead and come back to be with all of us. Or is it written to try to convince somebody who doesn't believe already that Jesus is Lord and that He is the Messiah and that He said He was going to do this? See, it goes back to the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. Does anybody know what verse 1, chapter 1 is of the Gospel of Mark? It's a very wonderful verse. It's easy to memorize, too. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Most people think it was an epilogue or a subtitle to Mark's book. Again, the scholars that believe that Mark ends at chapter 16, verse 8, part A, believe that it's not a subtitle. It's actually the beginning. Because it's the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And so the women left the tomb in fear, trembling, and they said nothing to no one. Is it the end? Or is it the beginning? Because we look at resurrection as being the end of the story, right? Jesus walked out of the tomb. Jesus is alive. So therefore the story is now complete. But I'm here to tell you this morning that resurrection is not an end. 
Resurrection is an invitation. Jesus rose from the dead. Not to end the story. But to continue it on. To invite you into a life. A life that only He can imagine for you. To invite you into a life. A life that only God can give to you. Resurrection is not the end. This morning is not the end of the story. And the women left the tomb in fear and amazement, just like in John, where the men left the tomb and went home and said nothing to no one. Peter and John, in the Gospel of John, left the tomb after they saw this empty tomb and went home. They went home. They were so moved by the fact that Jesus was alive that they went home. And the women in the Gospel of Mark were so terrified that they couldn't say anything to anyone. But the angel told them, go and tell the disciples and Peter that just as I had told them that I am going on ahead of them to Galilee, the angel says to the women, right? Where's Galilee? Okay, the town Galilee is someplace over in the Middle East. You know, it's over around Jerusalem. You know, it's in the Middle East, somewhere over around Jerusalem. If I had a map, I could probably point to it for you. But that's not the point. Where is your Galilee? See, that's the point this morning. Jesus isn't here. He's, he's, he's alive. He's been risen. He's no longer here. You don't have to look for Him here. He's gone ahead. When you leave this place, He's going to be wherever you're going. He's going to be there in that, pound of, in that pile of dishes in your sink. He's going to be there in that bag of dirty laundry that needs to get done. He's going to be there in that meal that you're going to have this afternoon. He's going to be there at that job that you really don't want to go to, but you have to. He's going to be there at school when you don't want to be there. It's exactly what he told the disciples. That I'm going to meet you wherever you are. And it's exactly what he tells to you. I'm going to meet you wherever you are. Because you're not going alone. Because the resurrection is not the end of the story. The resurrection is merely a step in the story and you're continuing. That's why the women left in fear and told no one anything. That's why the Gospel of Mark ends so abruptly. Not because Mark had writer's block and didn't know how to end the story but because Mark was writing to each and every one of us to say, this isn't the end. You now get to pick up the torch and run with it. You now get to pick up the love of Christ and the mercy and the grace that God gives to each and every one of us and take it out into a world that so desperately needs to hear it. So take that message of love. Take that message of hope that the grave and hell cannot hold Christ but that he's walked out of the tomb and he's with you and he's there and he's already out everywhere that you're going to be. He's going to meet you there. So go, knowing that the promises are true, and show that love to everyone that you need. Hallelujah! Christ is risen!